David Wyman and Michael Minkler are some of the sound guys behind the Oscar-nominated 2020 film Greyhound starring Tom Hanks. And I'm Matt Noah from Gold Derby, here to talk to you guys about the film. And I'll start off by asking you, David, what was the hardest sound to mix for Greyhound? The hardest scene we had to do was very early in the movie. It's the scene where Tom Hanks and Stephen Graham are talking to each other about this U-boat, this potential U-boat uh, sighting. And the reason why it was so difficult was because we shot both sets simultaneously. We split the camera crew and sent one person down to shoot the Stephen Graham side which is about 75 feet away from the gimbal where the other set was a uh, pilot house. And the gimbal is, you know, 15 feet uh, above the, the, the floor of the stage, plus another 15 feet for the set build. And then the two parties, you know, both sides, both sets had to hear each other and be able to react and talk in real time. So we had modified a lot of the, this 1940s equipment with uh, new speakers and a complete communication system throughout the ship to facilitate the actors being able to be as immersed in the action as possible. So when you see those conversations in the edit, that actually happened in real time. When Tom goes and he presses the button, Stephen Graham hears it at the other end and vice versa. And then when they pick up the phone, they're connected to each other through the phone as well. And that, that, was, a pretty, uh, that was a pretty difficult scene to do you know, in, in of itself. But luckily, I think the, the communication system that we made for the ship, which was modeled on how, how it, it would have been uh, in the 1940s using the old 1940s equipment with some modifications, really, really paid dividends for the actors and, and their immersive experience in, uh, in their roles. Yeah. What was the biggest challenge for you, Michael? Well, the biggest biggest challenge I think was to just keep up with the picture keep up with the momentum of everything and to stress the fact that these the these people were put into a, in a position of, of a relatively small amount of time you know 40 48 hours whatever it was to get across the sea in this zone without any air cover and being stalked by dozens of boats, of U-boats. So it's a, it's a terrifying experience. So for us, it would, the, the whole movie was um, all about keep it moving, moving, moving. You know, the, the peril never stops. It never, it never ceases at all. You're either on the offense attacking people or you're on the defense trying to avoid being killed. And uh, uh, it's a harrowing experience. It's a film with like explosions and radars, submarines and all these sort of big sort of sound moments. But I also would imagine that part of putting, putting the sound together for a movie is making choices of when to use sound, when to not use sound. Like, uh, you could, David, can you think of a moment of maybe a restraint or a, like a smaller choice that you had to make um, uh, when putting the film together? Um. Yeah, I, I think from a production mixer stand, standpoint, the, the, the script really dictates what how, how a scene is going to play out. And, you know, obviously we had quiet moments with Tom praying and, you know, some of some of the uh, some of the early scene where we have the two officers, the two guys brought in for fighting. And, you know, he has to take he has to take sort of punitive action. Um, but I the just like Michael said, it never stops. So. It, it's hard to dis it would be hard to delineate making a conscious choice in one of those action moments because my job is to be is to be able to provide Michael with as much material as he can so that he can make that that yeah. definitive choice. You know, I, I can't step back from the yeah. action and, and replay it. I, I'm I'm just yeah. I'm obliged to be there and, and capture everything I can. Yeah, and so Michael, what's the choice you had to make? It was an interesting one, one that you're particularly proud of. Well, sure. There's it, the entire mix is nothing but choices. Mm. Uh, every foot of the way, uh, we've got uh, enormous amounts of tracks of, of sound effects, of music, and of dialogue. 
uh, massive amounts of dialogue, uh, much more than on a normal movie. And so to help build the chaos and, and keep it going, uh, it, it's always a choice. Don't ever let any one thing pause. Don't ever let anything stop uh, because it's not stopping. It's, um, so it's the music that is driving the intensity of, of the action or just the fear. Um, and then it's sound effects and you turn it over to sound effects uh, instantaneously with something else. Uh, something that goes, you know, bang. Something that something that changes um, the the uh, the amount of danger that is going on. Um, dialogue. There's, there's there's commands and repeats of the commands. And there's and in in the midst of battle with all of the noise and the chaos, people must be heard. Uh, uh, these commands have to be heard and repeated. And it's a uh, it's a really difficult thing to do in, a, in, the, in the course of a mix. Uh, everything has got to keep going and going and going. And so it, it's a, it's a, the choices literally come every foot of film. They just keep coming and coming and coming and, and you don't stop making those choices. And we, you, know, you go over it and over it hundreds of times and you, until you get the right emotional feel as an audience, you want to be able to sit back and, and, and um, and experience this with the people that are on the screen. And you, you don't want to let those people's experience e devolve. So whether it's an emotional experience or whether it's, a, it's an adventurous one full of, of, of chaos and, uh, and war, yeah. um, you always keep it moving. Yeah. It, 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 like, I was just thinking about like one of the scenes in the film where like Tom, uh, the, the, the captain's talking to you know, crew about what message do we send out? You know, like three words might be too many. We've got to cut it down. Like maybe if we just say help, that'll communicate what we need it to communicate in the moment. Are there any parallels in sort of the themes of that scene of what do we need to communicate right now with putting sound together for a motion picture? Either of you can My take this. Yeah, David. I, I don't really. Um, well, for us, we don't use less that often. Yeah, yeah. Especially for a film like this. Yeah, but we do use it when when needed. I mean, less is a good thing, every now and then, um, and ho hopefully we never have to say help. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but those, uh, yeah, there are there are parallels. It's like take a breather and, th and think about your next move. Um, you've got to stay ahead of the game. You've got to stay ahead of the predators. Um, you, so again, it's the movement that, that's always helping you. Um, it's, pushing the, it's pushing the story, pushing the narrative, pushing the action, pushing the emotions. Uh, but that's a great a, a little moment that you, that you mentioned where he just pulls them aside and says like, what do we do? I mean, we've got to let our air cover know the circumstances that we're un under right now. And uh, how do we get them here as fast as possible? Yeah. So, yeah, it's just yeah. another one of those moments. Yeah. yeah. Um, if I could chime in as well. Yeah, um, please. Um, I think that that principle of being able to pass a very succinct message was part of the script. But I think also what happened for us on set is our responsibility to allow the actors to pass very succinct messages between them as the script called. And, and that was really, I, I, you know, I, I've, I've spoken about this before, but, you know, I think it fell under the sound umbrella to, to invent this communication system for the set you know, so that the sonar man could talk to the talker in real time through headphones and the talker could relate to the captain and the captain could hit the button and talk on a speaker all the way down. And those messages and that real time urgency without having to wait for somebody off screen to, to chime in who, who, who maybe wasn't an actor who's just doing a line read, you know, our actors were never off watch, if you like. You know, even when they weren't on scene, they were down sitting next to me with microphones waiting to chime in with their lights. 
So I think that idea of keeping the messages going is, is really, it was really important to help the actors maintain the, the level of intensity that they, they were able to. Mm. And guys, congratulations on your Oscar nomination for doing the sound of this movie. Uh, Greyhound's uh, lone Oscar nomination. So you're sort of representing the film at the Oscars this year, which is very exciting. Uh, do you want to just each give me a quick sort of, how did you, like, what was your reaction when you heard you'd been nominated for an Oscar? David, go ahead. Um, it's my first Oscar nomination, uh, my, my second BAFTA, but I was absolutely thrilled. It's, there's, no, there's no doubt about it that Oscars are the pinnacle of achievement as far as the award seasons are concerned. And I'm truly humbled by the, the nomination. I, I think we did fantastic work and, I, and I, I'll, I'll make no bones about that. But to be recognized when so much of it was in the undertow of just getting the performances out of the actor is, is, is a real, it's a real treat. And I hope that it serves as a reminder to, to all, all up and coming filmmakers that hard work and perseverance generally get you where you want to go. Yeah, Michael? I can, I, I can echo that same feeling. It's hard work and perseverance uh, that, that was there the whole time um, that I was on it, which was almost two years. But, you know, they made a couple of different passes on this movie. And the reason was um, they wanted to make a better movie. So it says Tom Hanks perseverance to so just keep going, keep going, keep going. What else can we do to make it better? And they, um, so to hear that we got a nomination um, was very rewarding that after all of this, it came out that good. We thought it came out that good. We thought it was, and that was, I wouldn't say, wow, that, you know, that's a aisle walker, as we like to say, uh, meaning that you're up for a nomination or you're going to get a, an award. We, we were not saying that, but we were, we were just patting ourselves on the back and all uh, hugs and kisses and everything, even though it was COVID, but um, that we had accomplished it. And, and uh, so to get the nomination was, was really amazing. Um, I'm sorry you didn't get more nomination because there's other parts of this filmmaking process that were exceptional. So yeah. I'm very grateful. Yeah, the, the good, like, it's not really a good thing, but it, not getting any other nominations at least means that uh, people were paying attention to the sound in the film and that it wasn't just, yeah. uh, oh, we're going to vote for this movie in everything this year. Let us just tick it for all the sort of like categories. So that's good. Um, yeah. Also, you guys, part of Oscar history, um, this is the first time that both sound categories have been, there used to be two sound categories at the Oscars, First year, there's one that's been put together. How do you guys feel about that? Because that means like less sort of sound getting acknowledged at the Oscars, but it also means you all sort of get nominated together, which is nice. I, I'm go ahead. go ahead, Michael. You go first. Okay. Well, I've been in the Academy a long time. Yeah. Um, a really long time, like 45 <laughs> years or something. And, and I've been on that committee uh, for more than a dozen years, the committee that makes those rules. And uh, so I, I've, I've been, I, I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it debated. I've been a part of the debate over the years. The debate's been going on for 20 years. Should we make uh, one a word out of it? Um, there's a lot of people that are for it and there were some that are dead against it. And there were those people that were against it fought really, really hard. But I think there was just no turning back. It, it, Technology has firmly grounded us together, the editors and the mixers. We both perform equal, uh, well, m more one way than the other way, but our, our responsibilities are so overlapping that it, I, I think they made the right choice. I, I wasn't on the committee this year when they made, when they finally did make the choice to, to go into one award but I think that they made the right choice. Yeah, David. Um, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm sort of ambivalent about it. Not not because I don't care, 
it's because this is my this is my first year uh, being nominated. So I, I feel not fully qualified. I'm just uh, I, I'm really really happy that uh, production sound mixes are, are still very much um, included in the discussion because uh, you know of, oftentimes you know we do a job of work that is instantaneous and we don't have the benefit of hindsight and to go back and 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 tweak everything so you know i i think that's that's an art in of itself yeah i i think like i like having the two categories but at the same time i think when you've got a general membership that um all like in the academy that votes for the winners of these awards it's probably very hard for people who aren't involved in sound to know the difference between what's a well sound mixed and what's a big sound what's a good sound edited film so um yeah well congratulations on being in for the first time the categories have been together um to wrap up today i just uh wanted if each of you could just tell me your like favorite sound moment from greyhound it could be either in the recording stage or when you watch the film for the final time or in the mixing room but what's what's the moment of sound that uh comes to each of your mind when you think of your work on greyhound uh david you can start then michael Okay, um, there was a lot of it. Mm. Uh, I, I think it was, I don't think, it, I can't be absolutely specific, but I can say that the achievement of being able to have so many uh, sound sources and sometimes up to 25 tracks and, and, and all, of that, all of that action going on and still be able to make the actors feel, you know, in, in their element, in their 1940s element, was really a, 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 part, a part of the soundscape that, that, I'm, that I'm exceptionally proud of. Yeah, Michael? Well, I don't think that there's any particular sound that makes me, uh, that, that it becomes a favorite for me, um, but there certainly is a moment that, yeah gets me and that's and it gets me every time I go through it and I've been through <clears throat> when um, when uh, the music swells and the crowd from the adjacent boats are cheering they're cheering mm -hmm. the greyhound uh, for you know rescuing for saving the day for for bringing them through to safety uh, it, it's a it's a moment that really gets me, and it's like, wow, we just went through an hour and a half of hell, and now there's blue skies and and safety, and and all the men are cheering, and, and so that, that's the moment that gets it for me. Yeah, I, I, that's a great sound moment too, because you got sort of the music fading out as the crowd starts to sort of cheer, and I they're like they're just that little moment of sort of quietness before yes. you stay, you know like, I, I think that's a really nice nice moment too michael so um thanks so much for uh talking with us guys all the best of luck for the academy awards coming up uh voting either has started or is about to start or whatever this gets published but uh yeah no thanks so much for spending time and all the best and great work on the film guys and people watching this interview can go to goldderby.com where they can follow entertainment awards and make their own predictions for the oscars thanks Okay, thank you, thank Matt. You. No worries. Thank you so much.